The earth was created, not with the gentle caress of love, but with the brutal violence of rape. evolution's greatest irony, one of the first creatures to appear would be the last to remain. For incubating in the darkened womb of prehistory was a seed of grotesque variation, a fetus with the capability to dominate all. Masked beneath the beauty of nature's world is one single and ugly truth. Life must take life in the interest of life itself. It is the mistake of arrogance to equate size with significance. For the less visible one's enemy, the more powerful his threat. My name is Nils Hellstrom. That name rings a bell at all. It's probably in connection with the words fanatic, lunatic, heretic. Actually, I'm a scientist. And these other descriptions have come as a result of my dedication and my work. My obsession, some have called it, with certain findings I've made. 
It's not easy to be obsessed. The past 18 months, it's cost me two fellowships, one assistant professorship, and uh, even a few friendships. I don't care about that, really. In a way, it's kind of flattering. What I really regret is that after nine years of concentrated work, I've learned something that no one wants to hear. But unless someone does hear, unless someone is at least exposed to it, we as a species might pass from existence without ever knowing why. This is the radiation laboratory of Rock Valley, Nevada a carefully controlled, highly quarantined area where tests on the effects of radiation on living tissue are conducted. The man first began to wonder whether or not he could withstand the effects of his own technology, what his future in a heavily radioactive environment would be. He began comparing his own powers against those of other animals. To most of the animals he tested, he found he was equally vulnerable. But into this irradiated environment where all living things began to die came an unexpected survivor. One creature that lived on as others faded from existence. This one creature that had survived the historical ages of ice and flood, of volcanic eruption and fire, the insect in a frightening tour de force of adaptability proved conclusively that he could endure where man would ultimately fail. This and other evidence leads me to the following belief. I'll tell it to you once, I'll tell it to you simply. I'll tell it to you in terms that no one likes to hear. If any living species is to inherit the earth, it will not be man. Long before the time that hydrogen bombs and pollution have put an end to us, we will face competition for the earth itself from a life form we arrogantly ignore. We will be overrun, deposed, and succeeded by an army that was here long before us and is ultimately better equipped to survive than we. Battalions of mindless soldiers entering the contest with capabilities beyond our imagination. Yes, I'm talking about insects. And if you at this moment dare to think this is lunacy, I invite you to remain in your seat draw your own conclusion and learn the inevitable destiny of ignorance. Primeval planet Earth, an arena of continual contest where only the most versatile and resourceful can endure. An atmosphere lacking in oxygen, scorched by day, frozen by night, continually bombarded by the deadly radioactive rays of the sun. In this testing ground where the mighty dinosaur would stagger and fall, one silent witness hangs on.